Hello, everyone. I'm Stephen Strang, and welcome to The Strang Report. Today, I interview my longtime friend, Mario Murillo. Many of you know my story. I've even written it in some of my books like this about the influence that he had on my life when I was only 20 years old. My parents had moved to California. I moved out there with them for the summers because I was a student at the University of Florida. And the Jesus movement was going on. And one of the young voices, a powerful preacher, was named Mario Morello, who is doing great things at a place called Resurrection City at the University of California. I even drove up to attend one of the services, and I had an opportunity to attend a week-long conference for college kids, and it was a powerful time. He was kind of the featured speaker. There were other speakers there, like uh, Joy Dawson of uh, Youth with a Mission and some other people. It was powerful, and God did some great things in my life. I know I've said that before, but I have new viewers and I just like to share that. I had no idea that my life would be intertwined with Mario Murillo over the years. Of course, uh, just a few years later, he spoke at some Jesus conferences down here in Florida. He was at my church. Of course, we renewed uh, acquaintances. I was just starting Charisma Magazine. In fact, I did a little newspaper. It was kind of like a Jesus newspaper. That's what we called it back then and did a story on Mario Murillo before we did Charisma Magazine. And then over the years, I've had the opportunity to publish several of his books, including his new book, It's Our Turn Now. And uh, I, he had a great crusade in Ocala, Florida. My wife and I and a couple of my staff drove up for it. And after it was over, I wanted to just share about what God is doing, not back in the 70s, although sometimes he and I mention it, but what God is doing now, people are so hungry. It was such a powerful, powerful meeting. And I hope that that comes through in this podcast. So stay tuned. Uh, Mario is a big part of my, my book, Spirit Led Living in the Upside Down World. And uh, I believe that you'll be blessed with this and then come back and I'll give you a little word at the end. Welcome to The Strang Report with Stephen Strang, the founder of Charisma. The Strang Report aims to encourage you to experience the power of the Holy Spirit and to discuss spiritual issues facing the church, our nation, and the world. Welcome back, everyone. And Mario Morello, thank you for taking time to be on my podcast. I always enjoy it. I always get huge numbers because you've got such a following, and God has really been blessing your ministry lately. And uh, it seems like every time I talk to you, I have to tell my listeners and viewers that you had an impact on me since 1971. Wow. Um, you were already a powerful evangelist in the Jesus movement. God was blessing your ministry in Berkeley, California, called Resurrection City, which I invite, right. which I visited one time. Yes, you did. I don't remember it, but you had a powerful impact. Of course, it was work of the Holy Spirit, but it was the right thing at the right time. So before we talk any further, uh, thank you for that. And also, we see something happening. I see something happening in the country. And I right. think that the, how should I say that, the success of your ministry the last couple of years with people coming to the tents, people getting saved, the miracles, everything else, I think is an indication of something that's happening. What do you yeah. see? Well, what I see is that the Holy Spirit is being poured out on America as a direct result of the misery that the left has wreaked on the family, on humanity and our hopes. And, and now it's, it's not just tyranny, but stupid, stupid tyranny. Like uh, I just read yesterday, they're gonna rewrite parts of Agatha Christie's novels that are uh, not acceptable to the modern mind. And I mean, this is, I don't, I don't see how any intellectual can look at that and not say that we are living in a crazy time of the thought police from George Orwell's 1984. I mean, that is exactly it. And it's driving people to God. People are looking for a simple, time that they've lost a meaning a sense of innocence uh, just a tremendous desire for hope and that's why our altars are flooded every night we just cannot keep up with the number of people that are trying to be saved right now 
We've never seen it. Not even in the Jesus movement did I see it like this, where it, it is just profuse and, and the herds, people are amassing at the front of our tent to be saved, crying and weeping and repenting. Well, there's been tyranny. Um, you know, all we have to look is at the 20th century to see the tyranny of communism, Nazism, uh, Japan in World War yeah. II. The difference, at least as I see it, Mario, is that we in the United States had sort of escaped that. We were yeah. kind of a haven for religious freedom, various yep. revivals that have come over the years, but it's here now. And I, I, for one, even though I've been a journalist my whole career and an observer, it's almost been hard for me to believe that it's as bad as it is. But like you say, when it gets so, so bad, it does cause people to turn to Jesus and people want answers. And yeah, they the, do. And the answers are not in politics. No. It's not in the culture. It's not in entertainment. The culture, the culture needs, people need, and of course the culture is made up of people. And so talk to me about some of the ways. Your, your tent revivals are one. I want to talk <clears throat> about what happened in Ocala. Uh, not yeah. too long ago, which is when I talked to you about doing this podcast. And uh, I just, it was, it was, I've been to so many meetings over the years, but for me, it was a peak religious experience. And I know I wasn't the only one who felt wow. that way. Wow. Well, what I want to add to the idea of where people are at and what's happening in our meetings is that everything has failed people. The vaccine didn't work. The food uh, advice that we got didn't work. The uh, people are finding out their therapists may be crazier than they are. They're finding out that relationships don't work, that the transgender regendering, the idea of what's racial rights and racial equality and all of it has been so uh, bungled. I've never seen it like this, where everything everybody has tried has failed. And then they look at, well, this is what we were told to give up in favor of the new thing. And they look back at what they thought was obsolete and find that it is the fountain of life, that it is the foundation of sanity, that civilization, in fact, is based on things that we are now discarding and people are rediscovering. You know, when they started tearing down statues uh, the ignorance of the younger generation about history. They tore down some statues of people that were actually fighting slavery, freedom fighters. And how did we ever get mad at Abraham Lincoln? How did that ever happen? Well, that's all that's piled up. So in our meetings, people have asked me, what is the single greatest component? And I'm going to tell you what it is. And it's the thing that I jealously guard above all else is the presence of God. Because I learned in the Jesus movement that I was not at the level uh, educationally of the university students that I was reaching. And when they walked into our meetings, their defenses were overruled by the presence of God and their need was apparent to them. So what's happening in the tent is people are walking in and it's almost like two worlds. There's the world where everyone hates each other and everyone is so filled with fear and doubt and division and, and skepticism. Then they sit in the tent and even before a note is sung, even before there's a, a, a word spoken from the uh, platform, the presence of God is already at work in people and they're going, what is this? Why do I feel hope? Why do I feel that things are going to be okay. Why do I feel that I'm going to get the answers that I have yearned for all my life? It's the presence of God. And that's so important because a lot of people have never experienced that. And um, I've, I've been to, uh, this isn't exactly what you're saying, but it, it came to mind. I've been to a number of pro-Israel rallies that were Christian events to show support of Israel and the Jewish people. And, and when Christians get together, we sing, we worship, we That's pray, right. and we invited our Jewish friends and they were happy to come because they're happy for the support. Mm -hmm. And 
in one instance where I was the leader, I told the worship leader, I said, listen, when we sing, let's just worship. And wow. these Jewish people were so touched. And it was not an, an evangelism mm -hmm. thing. It wasn't a proselytizing thing. They were experiencing the presence of God. That's right. Which if you go to a synagogue service, which I've been, been to numerous times, you know, you read the Torah, you, you know, you do the rituals, but there's no presence of God, at least no. as you and I would understand it. And, and I grew up in the church. My father was a minister. So there was never a day that I wasn't around this kind of thing to some extent, but you're right. It, it changes everything in the world. Everything. Yes, it and, does. And I've seen even Christians who may theologically oppose some of these things, but boy, when they're touched by the Holy Spirit in a deep that's way, it. their theology changes just like that. And that's you know, kind of what you're talking about. People, yes, the intellectualism at the university level, whatever it is, it just disappears. Uh, are you seeing that in your meetings? You're having temp meetings. You're also in places like the Maybe Center or this, this great venue that you were down here in Florida on. Are, are they similar or are some events different than others? Well, I think the similarity is the presence of God, like you said. The difference is that what we did in Ocala was to put two elements together that I, in my memory have never been together. The practical instruction on how to activate your conservative Christian values on a local level with a miracle service that's evangelistic at night. So we had patriots show up in Ocala and they loved Trump, but they didn't know Christ. And suddenly they're confronted by the gospel in the evening and the miracles of God. And we had a, a flood of, of salvations that you saw. And so this is important because I really believe one of the dangers of conservative movement right now, which is getting sadly tagged as Christian nationalism, which is nothing more than a Christian believing and loving his country, that's all it is, is that we constantly are raising the dire problems of the nation without any hope or practical solution for them. So what happened is Jesus didn't just call the 12 disciples. He said, wait for power in the upper room, and then you'll be my witness to Jerusalem, Judea, and the uttermost parts of the world. One of the shocking elements in the Bible is how Jesus snuck the idea that he was leaving in John 14. He just kind of snuck in the idea, hey, I'm going. He knew it would be a devastating thing for the disciples to find out that his physical appearance and presence was going to go away. So he said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Uh, I go to prepare a place for you. In my father's house, there's many mansions. And he goes, I must go. And that was where the thought was there. But he said, you have to understand, it's urgent that I go because the helper cannot come unless I go. Christianity became global when the Holy Spirit arrived. And what a lot of believers don't understand is the devil's number one objective in the Christian faith. If you were to say, what is the devil's top list thing? Is to keep the church from depending on the Holy Spirit to do the work in the culture. We, we believe we're supposed to do it. We, we depend on spin doctors and experts and theologians. We don't understand that the Spirit of God was tasked with being the commander in chief of the Christian forces on earth. He would educate them, he would strengthen them, he would provide for their emotions, their healings, their physical provision, and the tactics and strategies needed to infiltrate the culture. When the church has depended on the Spirit of God, she's been irresistible. Even Jesus said, he said, I will give you a mouth and wisdom that none of your enemy, uh, uh, opponents will be able to gain, say, nor resist. That is what we need now is the Holy Spirit. That's what's bringing the presence into our tent. That's what's doing the job. 
uh, I can't take credit for why all the crowds are showing up. Spirit of God's bringing them. We surrendered to the Spirit, and He gave us this wonderful opportunity and this effectiveness. It's a gift from God. You know, I was privileged to be able to sit where I could see the people when they flooded forward. Uh, yeah. I, I, no one's really told me the number, but there had to be at least 800 people who came forward right. for salvation. And if I remember correctly, you even told them this is not free dedication or anything like that. I mean, in fact, in some ways you made it hard for them and they yeah. came forward and I could, I was up close where I could see the emotion and sense what was going on. And then in a different service, Lance Walnow had people come forward. It was totally uh, unplanned to come forward to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it, it was just, it was just powerful. And, you know, we need that sort of thing to happen, not just in your yeah. meetings, but in churches and meetings and cities and everything around the country. And you recently wrote a book, and while this podcast is not literally about your book, we can't fail to talk about it. And Thank I'll just you. tell my viewers that I read part of your book very, very early in the process, but I had never read the whole thing. I just finished in the last week. Wow. And it was powerful at many different levels. And uh, I want you to just talk about it. It's called, It's Our Turn Now. And you were talking about just how, how people are desperate. At, but, and, it, and it seems when you look at it from a sociological point of view, that the other side is winning in so many ways. But, but you're saying it's our turn now. So why don't you just el elaborate on it? Because this is a book that people need to get. It's available in Thank stores, you. but probably easiest to get it online. Tell us what you hope people get from that book. Okay, the first thing that we have to understand is that we live in an age, ladies and gentlemen, where trends are the things that are studied most. What's going to happen next? What's going to happen? So there was a sociological book written called The Fourth Turning that was sold around the world. It went crazy. And experts began to redefine so much of what they believed because they said that every so many decades, four things happen. And the fourth turning is the most dangerous because at that point, a nation will either flip into paganism, chaos, and disintegration or into moral awakening. And for a long time after I read that book, I kept watching our nation thinking to myself, what do I see? Is it going to flip this way or that way? And when all my contemporaries were filled with such despair, God dealt with me two years ago. He said, there's a trend that is the greatest undercurrent, one of the greatest spiritual undercurrents in American history. And you'll see it. It People will suddenly in mass turn to God. Well, people thought, well, that's crazy. Look at what's happened in the pandemic. Look what how the church has been assaulted. Then suddenly we had a NFL player have a heart attack and we watched God capitalize on that to suddenly legalize prayer in the NFL instantly. <laughs> and then it led to Asbury and then suddenly the Jesus Revolution movie came out and we watched in our meetings, it's the tide just rose overnight and suddenly we were faced with a shortage of workers and a massive harvest. Well, I wrote the book before all of that happened and I knew it was coming. And I, you know, I said, I'm gonna skip a step. I'm gonna quit writing a book that predicts the future and assume that what I'm predicting is so going to happen that I'm gonna write a manual about what to do when it starts happening. And I can't believe how on time, I gotta give God the glory. when I. Look at it's our turn now. I read it myself and I look at it and I'm shocked. It's like this was the manual in advance of the event. So now we can seize this. Jesus told them, look, you, you did not know the hour of your visitation. We can know it. That's the difference with Americans right now. We can know it. We can seize it. We can shred and shed all of these despondent feelings about what is the World Health Organization going to do? 
What is woke going to do? What is the devil going to do? And realize that God has set the table for the church to preach a simple message that's going to reap amazing results. Well, I say amen to that. And this is the book, is our turn now. Full disclosure, I am the publisher. Um, <laughs> but I have, I've published a thousand books and I like to sell all of them. But this one goes way beyond that. This is a message, not only should the viewers and listeners uh, read themselves, but we need to get this out to people. And I, for one, have been talking about this every single day, ever since, I, uh, for a long, long time, because I believe in it so much. And thank you for the privilege. You've had several publishers over the years, and, and we feel very pub, uh, privileged that you had let us publish it. I believe that strongly in it. So let's get back to uh, uh, this move of the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. We, we kind of touched on it, but this is more than just people getting saved. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. And um, you know that I wrote uh, a book that won't be out until right before Pentecost Sunday called Spirit Led Living in an Upside Down World. And I talk, uh, this really resonates to me because I talk about the upside down world that you're describing and the fact that we've got to have the power of the Holy Spirit to survive, to not be discouraged, to not give up, to be happy and enjoy uh, peace and joy and uh, happiness and all the things that are the gifts or the fruit of the Spirit and then to have the power of the gifts of the Holy yeah. Spirit to even go through the trials and tribulations that the Bible talks about. And, um, you know, I could have written about a lot of things, but I felt like you did that this was the right message at the right time. And you actually have a very prominent part in the book because wow. of what God is doing in your life. And, but not only that, but of the insights that you have as a leader and as a uh, preacher of the gospel. So what could people do? Of course, we want them to read our books. Uh, that goes without saying. But what can people do to press in? Because not everyone can go to one of your tent crusades. People can check you out online. You're all over online. In fact, I've watched some of your meetings on, on streaming. It's not quite as good as being there, but it's, it's powerful. Uh, how, how, what should people do, in your opinion, to really be a part of what God is doing and not just be a spectator? Well, you know, I want to also add that uh, I would like to talk about your book because the question you just asked is best answered in your book. And I want to tell you why I believe that. Not only because I looked at it and I've seen the content, but also the fact is that we have forgotten the edge of the born again, spirit filled believer, the edge that we have. And there's nothing worse. You know, the Bible says so often, remember. The word remember is all the way through the word of God. It says, remember, uh, you know, the, forget not all his benefits, Psalm 103. We are constantly told that they tempted, they forgot God's works and limited him. And that's how we suddenly find ourselves living in the natural. Well, our enemy is supernatural. The emotions that are trying to destroy you are supernatural. They're coming from a source that is not human and you cannot combat them. You cannot. Here is the extreme irony of the Christian life. You have no might against what's going on in modern life. If you do it in the natural modern life has no might against the spirit filled believer who's walking in the spirit and not in the flesh. That's the extremity of it. That modern life can handle us, take us down every single time. All we got to do is fight it in our strength. The moment that we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us, it is, it is not a contest anymore. And I was, in fact, on the final night, I was talking about the supremacy of the gospel. How the fact is we have peace that passes understanding. That comes from the Holy Spirit. The best definition of peace that passes understanding is... Why am I so convinced that everything is going to turn out okay no matter how bad it looks to me now? Because something is at work in me. Second is the power over habits. 
which nothing in the world matches the believer's power to get over addictions when the Holy Spirit is engaged. Okay, I'll give you a vivid example. Seven to eight percent of those that go into government addiction programs are set free from drugs. In a faith-based deliverance ministry that adds the Holy Spirit, the baptism in the Holy Spirit brings an 80% cure rate for people on drugs. Why? Because the Bible says in the beautiful translation, the New Living Translation, it says in Philippians, it is God who works in you to give you two gifts. One is the desire to change, and the second is the power to change. This is such a hope. Imagine if you surrender to God right now, you're watching and you surrender to God and say, my habit, my emotional destruction, the things in my past that every expert tells me is incurable and I'm gonna limp through life for the rest of my existence. You find the power of the spirit, surrender to the power of the spirit, and all of a sudden, in an upside down world, as your book says, you see things. So it, it's, you, you get direction, you get emotional release, you get physical healing, you get mental protection, the gift of sanity, the gift of discernment, the edge that the believer has starts to make it incredible that you can thrive, blossom as a person, in the darkest of times, and it's happened before. I mean, to think of the beautiful books that Paul wrote in prison, in the most unlikely and uninspiring element, he came up with the most precious words that the human race has ever heard. That's what we are. We're capable of not only going against the grain, but living above the fray with a reality, not escapism. It's not like what Buddhism says, to deny reality and, or, or to just ignore it. We can confront it. The power of the Christian faith is seen in one statement that Jesus made. I don't pray that you take them out of the world. He, he said, don't take them out, leave them in. Because unlike everybody else, we don't have to live in a monastery, in a cabin, in a bomb shelter. We can go to our daily life, go to work, Go to a woke culture and have with us a surpassing presence and power and sense of direction that makes us able to stand against anything. That's an amazing promise. And that's why I like your book, because that's what I believe it offers people, is that, that single ability that they need. Well, thank you very much. Um, you said so much. We don't really have time to dissect it in a short podcast like this. But as we wrap up, I'd like you to pray and to pray for the listeners and the viewers. And then after you pray, I'll be back with a closing thought. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just say this to the people. I say, Lord, bless them. Lord, touch them. Lord, give them an awareness of your presence in every one of their situations. Help them to know that the prayers for their children and their grandchildren will be answered, that the redeemed of the Lord will see their, their will on their enemies and on evil. Give them strength, give them healing, give them hope. Fill them, Lord, with the fire of God so that they can win souls, lay hands on the sick, cast out devils, and be aware that every day on this earth is a privilege and not a curse. In the name of Jesus, I ask, amen. Thank you for staying tuned. I hope you enjoyed that. I enjoyed that so much. I enjoy every single time I'm around Mario. You know, he's a couple years older than me, not much. He And he's been in ministry now for over 50 years. But the Holy Spirit has just stirred him up in an exciting way. I hope you'll want to uh, buy my new book. It's releasing May 16th. It's called Spirit-Led Living in an Upside-Down World. It's available at Amazon.com. It'll be in bookstores as of May 16th. If you want an early copy, you can get it on my own website, stevestrangbooks.com. I'm starting to do live podcasts. When I do them, I'll do them at 4 p.m., usually Tuesdays and Thursdays. Sometimes I have to travel. 
I'll do them another day, but the best way is you can subscribe. And when you do, you'll be notified when I come on live. And uh, I hope that you do that. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Thank you for listening to The Strang Report with Stephen Strang. Stay up to date with the latest episodes by subscribing on YouTube and Rumble, as well as your favorite podcast app at cpnshows.com. Get the latest reports delivered directly to your inbox by subscribing to the newsletter at strangreport.com. In an upside down world, there is only one way to stay grounded. Life is full of twists and turns, successes and setbacks. How can you reach your God-given potential and achieve your dreams? With over four decades of reporting on the move of the Holy Spirit around the world, Stephen E. Strang has firsthand experience of how the Holy Spirit has led him on a remarkable journey of faith and a successful life. In his new book, Spirit-Led Living in an Upside-Down World, he will invest his true life lessons into the hearts of readers as he reveals his secrets to having a successful life led by the Holy Spirit. Go to booksbystevestrang.com to pre-order your copy today.